I began my project by making an IOD mold and I started with a paper clay. This is something you can purchase off of Amazon. I have cornstarch and I have a paintbrush. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the cornstarch to line the mold so that the clay doesn't stick to the mold. The mold is actually very pliable. It's a rubber and it's bendable and you're gonna bend that mold out once it's pressed in there. But I have found that using cornstarch flour or even talcum powder helps to keep it from sticking. Kind of like when you're baking bread on a breadboard and you gotta flour your breadboard. Next, you're gonna take a piece of your paper clay, just break you off a, a, a pretty big hunk there, but just enough that you think will go in the mold kind of roll it around in my hands a little bit. And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna mash it down inside the mold. And what I have found, and I don't show you in this demonstration, but you can actually, once it's mashed down in the mold, take a little bit of the cornstarch and dust over the top of it. And if you have like a round paint can or a rolling pin, anything that you have, you can roll over that and flatten it really, really good. And when you get ready to pull that out, it just pops out like magic. And there you have it, a perfect little mold. And you're gonna take this and apply some glue and stick it to your cabinet door. The first thing that I do is take a color called weather vane and I apply it over the IOD molds and then around the corners of the cabinet. I completely cover the whole area and then I let it dry. What we're doing here is trying to create a depth of field into the corners of the cabinet door. And by adding a dark color and then a lighter color on top, it gives you that depth and that contrast that we're looking for. After the first color is applied, I go back with the Elmer's glue with a little tiny artist brush, and then I go back and I strategically place the glue where I want a crackle effect to come through because we're gonna be doing multiple layers on this door and the glue will allow the paint to crackle as it dries and then you'll get to see the dark through the light. We'll continue and you'll see as we go.
Okay, after the glue has dried, we're gonna go back with a second color of paint, and this is called Goldenrod, and it's from the Wise Owl Chalk Paint line. It is a chalk synthesis paint. It's the same as the weather vane, the gray that we put on before. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover the whole area, the outer area and the gray area with the, the golden rod, and then I'm gonna leave a circle in the middle. Um, continue to watch and I'll show you what we're gonna do. I'm leaving the circle in the middle of the board because I wanna put a lighter color in there and I'm gonna show you some really cool blending techniques, so keep watching. Okay, I've almost got the, the outer part of the door painted, and as you watch, you'll notice that I'm only gonna be putting paint on the outside like we talked about, and I'm gonna leave like a circle in the middle. And that circle in the middle is gonna be the highlighted area on this flat cabinet door. When you do this technique, it actually visually draws your eye to the center of the door and not to the outside. And what we're gonna be doing is putting a really cool stencil in the middle of this and I want the eyes to be drawn to the middle. The next step, you're gonna to have to have a clean brush for this. So go ahead and get your clean brush and we'll get started. The next step is going to take a lighter color and the color that I'm using today is called Villa. This also is a Wise Owl paint product and it is a beautiful kind of a creamy color. And what I'm gonna do is completely fill that circle and then I'm gonna blend the edges of the yellow kind of in with the white so it kind of gives that depth perception like there's a hump actually in a flat surface of the door. Just continue to play with it. You'll get the technique down. It takes a little bit of practice, but these doors are the perfect thing to practice on before you put this on your furniture. Okay, so what you need to remember is that we're working with wet paint. Even the yellow is still wet. There was no drying time after the yellow. We immediately went into doing the lighter color. And what you may notice is that I have a spray bottle with water in it. It's set on mist. And if you start noticing that your paintbrush is dragging, you can take and mist the paint slightly with water and kind of bring it back to life and continue your blending. Now this is the fun part. Fun part, but maybe a little scary if you've never tried it because your, your cabinet door looks really pretty right now and I'm fixing to do something that's gonna just blow you away. I'm gonna actually add 
some gray, and it's the same color that we put underneath. It's the weathered, weather vane, I believe is what it's called. And what I'm doing is I have like a one inch putty knife, and it's a chiseled edge. It has a really sharp edge on it, and I'm taking just a dab of the paint, and the paint is still wet, and I'm taking it and kind of dragging across the surface in different areas. What I'm trying to recreate here is kind of mimic uh, the paint that kind of worn and weathered look like maybe it just, you know, was kind of chipping off and rubbing off, but you just kind of drag lightly over it. You'll notice in the video here that after I've done, uh, dragged it down, I'll actually kind of go across with it too and kind of create like a, a cross hatch pattern. But you just have to kind of play with it. You have to trust your instincts and not be scared. Just go ahead and go with it. You'll notice too that I turn my putty knife sideways sometimes and I drag it along the edges. This actually recreates and actually looks like paint is kind of chipping through. It's like a fake chippy look. But remember, we have the glue underneath. So as this dries, you're gonna see some crackle come up and I'm just creating a lot of texture here. As you're doing this technique, sometimes it's a good thing to kind of step back a little bit and look at your work, just kind of get a visual feel of it. And sometimes when you get too close, you're a little too personal to your work and you got to step back. Sometimes walk in the other room, come back in, look at it. You may love it better the second time you look at it. Sometimes it's kind of hard to know when to stop, when you kind of get playing, but when you think you've done enough, you've probably done too much. So just go ahead and stop and go with it. Okay, while your paint is still wet, you're gonna pick up the same bottle with the water and you're gonna lightly mist over the whole area. I try to concentrate more at the top of the board or the direction that I want the paint to run down because you're gonna mist it just enough that you actually start seeing some of the colors kind of pull down into it. And that's, that's gonna be really cool and fun and you can kind of see it in this video as it kind of runs down. Just a little, not a lot. Next, we're gonna take a 220 grit sandpaper and we're gonna lightly sand over the whole board. There's gonna be a lot of rough edges because we did a lot of texturing. There's been a lot of layers of paint put on, but just kind of smooth this out and you'll start seeing some really pretty colors kind of showing through, kind of muted and blended. Looks gorgeous. Okay, so the next step is really fun, guys. I made a wash. It's called a color wash. You can make it with a teaspoon or a tablespoon of chalky paint, add it to like four to five cups of water, add it to your water bottle, shake it really well, make sure it's, it's well mixed, and then you're gonna mist over the whole area that you painted. Now, this is done after that first layer, of course, is dried. So you're just gonna kinda let it run down and it's gonna catch in all those little grooves. You'll notice where all the crack where you put the glue earlier, it's gonna get, get caught in all those little grooves and it's gonna set and pool in there, which gives it really, really cool texture and just really yummy old aged look. 
So I'm gonna spray the whole area and then I'm gonna come back with, I believe I used a paper towel in this demonstration, just a wet paper towel. I, I'm, I don't use a dry one, I wanna put wet on it and you may even spray a little bit of it on your paper towel like this and then just gently wipe over the area to remove the excess that you want off. Or you could leave it on and let it dry as is. Okay, so our piece has been painted. It's ready to be sealed. I just happened to have some min wax, and this is like a, uh, I think it's a furniture wax. Um, it's inexpensive, you can get it at Walmart. I don't typically use it on furniture, but on a project like this, instead of using my good furniture wax, I will do this. You can use the wax, or you could use a sealer, a polyacrylic, anything that you wanna use over the chalky base paint. It just needs to be sealed at this point. And this is a clear wax that I'm using. And if you notice, the wax usually deepens the color of the chalky paint. That's why I like to use it. But like I said, you can use any sealer you want on this. Now in this demonstration, I actually used a clear wax. And then after I used the clear wax and it dried, I went back with a darker wax and kind of hit some of the areas to kind of give it a little more depth and aged look. And it just, it just looked really pretty. But anytime that you're using dark wax, I recommend that you put a clear wax first and then do dark wax over it because chalky paint is very porous. And if you use a dark wax first on a lighter color paint, it's gonna make your paint look really, really dark. And I don't want it dark, I just want it kind of aged look. After your piece is fully waxed, you're gonna let it dry and then come back with a soft cloth and buff it to a pretty sheen. And after 24 hours, you can put Chalk Couture on here.